In this video, I will be installing the virtual machine that I plan on using throughout this LVM course. So I'm going to use VirtualBox. And before I get started, I need to set up a network host adapter that I can use so, so that I can easily SSH into the machine rather than using the VirtualBox interface for my command line server. So I'll start by going to File, Host Network Manager, and I'm going to go ahead and create one here to use. By default, mine's called VBox Net Zero, and yours may or may not be the same name. I'm going to go ahead and enable a DHCP server so that my computer can get an address. There we go. And I can make changes to the adapter uh, for the IP address and so forth that I want to have. If I come over to the DHCP server, I can see that I'm going to start off the server's address in my case is .2, and it's going to start out handing addresses at .3. So if I plan on only using this computer with this host adapter, network, network host adapter, then I should always be getting the dot three address. It makes it a little easier for me to keep SSHing into the machine, especially if I'm on a laptop and I plan on traveling from location to location, and that IP address could change if I used a bridged adapter. So I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna leave everything here, make sure that the DHCP server is enabled. I'll go ahead and hit close. And I also need to have the ISO that I'm going to use to install the operating system. So if you don't have that, you want to go to ubuntu.com and download. So I went to the download tab here, the 1804 LTS version. And there may be a newer version out. The 2004 will be coming out actually just in a few months. So there may be a new version. The command should be very similar and the installation should also be very similar as well. I'll go ahead and minimize that. And I've already downloaded that ISO file, so I'll go ahead and begin. I'll create a new virtual machine. I like to give it the name of the operating system I'm using. And that also helps change the type and the version to the correct version. And I'll put a hyphen, and I plan on using it for the LVM course, so I'll call it dash LVM. And I'll hit next. I'm going to leave the default settings as I go through this. So the RAM is 1,024 megabytes. My hard drive is a 10 gigabyte hard drive I'm going to plan on creating. I'll leave it VDI, I'll leave it dynamic, and here's the size again, and I'll just plan on hitting create. So I have a single hard drive at the moment. I'm gonna make one other change here before I install it, and that's to the network. So I'll come over here. I need adapter one to be NAT so that I can get an actual internet connection out to the outside world, but I wanna come over to adapter two, and I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. And here I'm gonna set this as the host only adapter and then it should automatically choose whatever the name was that you have selected. And if you had multiple names, you could have a drop down here of those choices. But this is gonna allow me to easily SSH into this virtual machine so that I can make a connection and use an actual terminal or PowerShell window rather than using VirtualBox's interface for connecting to the server. All right, I will come back after we install it to the storage and add additional storage drives. But right now I wanna plan on leaving that single drive. And I'll go ahead and hit okay and start this. If I did add additional drives before I installed it, you may not get the easy wizard here, which is going to ask me now for where the operating system or the ISO file is that I've downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the little folder and choose the 1804 server that I have downloaded from ubuntu.com. I'll choose open. And now let's go ahead and hit start. It's going to go through the process here and I should be prompted momentarily with the language. And I'm going to go ahead and shorten the video up by waiting until the prompt comes up. So I'll pause the video and wait and then start it back up again. So now if the ISO booted correctly, you should see the language. And I'm going to go ahead and leave English. So I'll hit enter. And I'm going to leave everything here English as well. So I'll go ahead and hit enter again. I had two network adapters. And the reason why I set up the virtual machine with both adapters to begin with is so that it would automatically detect both of them and enable them both for DHCP when I got started here. So I can see ENP, in my case, ENP0S3, and it has an IP address of 10.0.2.15. If you're using the NAT adapter, it probably will be the same address. And then I have another one, ENP0S8, and that one uses the host-only network that I created. That's the network address that I plan on SSHing into whenever I connect into this virtual machine here. All right. Both of those are set to DHCP4. They both have addresses, so I'm going to leave them both the way they are and just hit Done. I do not have a proxy address to connect to the outside world, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter there. 
and I do plan on using Ubuntu's mirror, so I'll just hit enter again. Now here's a choice, the use entire disk or use entire disk and set up an LVM. Although the course is gonna be setting up and using LVM, I am going to wait and not use the LVM for the setup. I plan on setting up LVM for the other disks rather than the operating system drive. However, you can easily set up your first LVM using that there. So I'm gonna choose the use entire disk now. All right, so here's my hard drive. It's a 10 gig hard drive. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. And I have to move the arrow down to continue. All right, so now I'll go ahead and type in my name. I can give my server a name as well. I'll just call it Matthew-LVM. Pick a username. I'll use Matthew. Pick a password. And confirm my password. I'll hit tab and then hit done. Now I do want to SSH into this machine so that way my PowerShell or my terminal will have a better interface for me to work with than VirtualBox, than the interface from VirtualBox. So I'll go ahead and hit the space bar to select that. Come down to done. I am not installing any additional packages. I'll just hit the tab and hit done. And now I'm going to wait until my installation is complete. So I'll give it a few minutes and I'll pause the video again and then we'll come back to the rebooting of the server. All right, I've resumed the video after several minutes of the installation and downloading new packages, of which took most of the time was to download and install the new packages. My computer is ready to reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter to reboot. It's gonna ask me one more time, right there it is, press uh, or please remove the installation media, then press enter. So that'll finish the shutdown of my computer. It'll boot back up, and then I'm just gonna test to make sure that my SSH is working because I will be SSHing into the server each time I do any of the lessons. So while this is booting up, I'm gonna open up my terminal. And if you're on Windows, you can open up PowerShell and should be able to SSH as long as you have a recent version of Windows 10, you should be able to SSH into your server as well using the same command that I will be using. So let me go ahead and log in. There will be a couple uh, broadcasts being displayed to the screen, so you may want to give it a minute until you stop seeing these messages being broadcasted. And you can hit enter a couple times. There we go. And I'll log in with my username and my password. And if you don't know the IP address of the computer or forgot it, you can type in IP space ADDR and look for the 192 address, which happens to be my adapter right at the top of the screen here, 56.3. So I'm gonna log in with Matthew. So SSH Matthew at 192.168.56.3. I'll go ahead and hit enter, type in yes, and my password, and I can SSH. So the rest of the videos that I will be using, you'll see the terminal logged in rather than using VirtualBox interface. I'm gonna power my machine off, type in sudo power off. And the sudo password is your password for the mean user account that you're using. And that will be in the process of shutting it down. I have one last configuration change that I wanna to make to this virtual machine, and that's to add in those hard drives that I need. So I'm gonna to go to the settings of the machine, go to storage, and then under my controller for my SATA port here, there is a plus over a hard drive image, and that adds a new hard drive. I'm gonna click on that and say to create a new disk. I'm gonna leave it as VDI, I'm gonna leave it dynamic, and I'm going to just make a quick change. I'm gonna make that only one gigabyte. I don't need all 10, and that's gonna make it easier for me to differentiate between the drives. And I'll call it LVM1. So I'll just rename that to LVM1.VDI here and hit create. Now, if you didn't catch that, I'm gonna do that again for my next drive. I'm gonna hit the plus arrow over the hard drive, click create new disk, VDI, dynamic, 
I'll change this to one gigabyte and I'm going to rename this now to LVM2. And the name doesn't matter so much. This is just letting me know which drive that I have. And I'll go ahead and hit create. So now I've got two additional drives. I'll go ahead and do it again. Create new disk. Change that to one gigabyte and rename this one now to LVM3. Hit create. And I need one more additional drive, so I'll do that one more time. Go ahead and hit next, dynamic, and then call this one LVM4. All right, and I'll go ahead and hit create. So now I have a 10 gig drive here, which is in my SATA port zero, and this is my boot drive. Then I've got LVM1, which is in port one, LVM2, which is in port two, LVM3, which is in port three, and LVM4, which is in port four. So these are only one gigabyte drives. That'll be a lot easier for me to work with, to do formatting. It'll allow me to do the file system. It's very small drives to work with but it will allow me to go through the course and be able to demonstrate everything I need to for LVM. All right, in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and create our first volume group. I'll go ahead and hit okay, and I'll see you next time.